In this video, I'm going to review the new Elenchrom 3, a 261 watt second compact battery powered flash unit. Welcome back everyone. The new Elenchrom 3 is a portable off-camera flash unit that is around the size of a 7200 millimeter lens. It will produce 525 full power 261 watt second flashes on a single charge of the integrated lithium ion battery. And if you're running low on power during a shoot, you can charge the light with any USB-C power source while you're shooting. You don't have to turn it off to charge it. We'll get into the specs, including the 1.2 second recycle time, as I compare the light to its closest competitor, the B10X. And I'll share with you the results of several tests I conducted over the past few weeks with the 3 and a Profoto B10. These tests were the most extensive tests I've ever conducted on any lights over the course of my career. Plus, I'll show you the results I got from two photo shoots, and if you stick around to the end, I'll share with you what I learned while making this video and how it's going to change the way that I shoot moving forward. This will be great information for everyone, regardless of whether or not you're planning on purchasing one of these lights. And to give you a little bit of background, I switched over from Profoto to Elenchrom in 2019. And over the past few years, Elenchrom has hired me on occasion to speak in trade show booths and to make content for their YouTube channel. They also gave me the Elenchrom 3 that I'm going to be using today, but they didn't pay me to make this video. And in fact, they gave me the light without promising to make any content whatsoever. And they also didn't have any editorial control over this video. So as always, I'm here to share with you what I learned, but if you'd like to help support me to make more videos like this, please click on the links in the description. And also if you could please like and subscribe and sign up for the bell, I would really appreciate it. You can also check out my members only website, the Academy with John Gress. The Ellen Chrome 3 is exactly half the power of the Ellen Chrome 5 and twice the power of the Ellen Chrome 1. The 1 was just strong enough to shoot outdoors with high speed sync and small modifiers. So having one more stop of power will make this light a lot more attractive for many users. If you plan on using a large softbox outdoors or a beauty dish, the Ellen Chrome 5 would be a better choice given the fact that it has twice the amount of power and an umbrella hole inside of the octa ring to accommodate the deflector discs for Ellen Chrome beauty dishes. The form factor of the Ellen Chrome 3 will fit in any modifier made for the Pro Photo system, and it comes with a nice adapter that will allow you to use it with any of the standard Ellen Chrome modifiers. It works with Elenchrom's Skyport system, but you could trigger it with Profoto lights using the photo cell. The Elenchrom 3 also comes with a knob and a lever to secure the tilt mechanism. I tested it for over 36 hours and the lever held a large modifier in place perfectly. The Elenchrom 1 came with a rubber adapter and only had a knob on the tilt mechanism. Unfortunately, I had difficulty keeping large modifiers in place with that light. The Ellen Chrome 3 can recycle in 1.2 seconds at full power, which is slightly faster than a Profoto B10X, which recycles in 1.3 seconds. I conducted a test with the Ellen Chrome 3 at full power and confirmed that the recycle time is exactly 1.2 seconds. As I mentioned earlier, the Ellen Chrome 3's internal battery is capable of 525 full power flashes, and you can charge it with the included charger in only one hour and 40 minutes. Plus, you can charge it in general with any USB-C power source, and that includes your ability to do so while you're shooting. You could use power banks or even your MacBook charger to keep the Ellen Chrome lights charged up on set. On the other hand, the Profoto B10X battery is capable of 400 flashes at full power, and you have to use the proprietary Profoto charger. The Ellen Chrome 3 appears to share the same 20 watt bi-color modeling lamp as the Ellen Chrome 1, which produces 3000 lumens of light, which is quite comparable to the 24 watt 3200 lumen modeling lamp in the Profoto B10X. The Ellen Chrome 3 can be turned down 5.2 stops all the way down to 7 watt seconds, which is low power on all of the current Ellen Chrome lights. However, the B10X can go down 10 stops, which is quite a bit lower. 
However, the only time that I wished that I could go lower with Ellen Chrome lights was when I was shooting during twilight. And in those instances, I've just used the modeling lamps. All right, let's get on to the more important nerdy stuff. Flash duration is one of the most underrated important statistics that you can look at when selecting a new light. The flash duration numbers tell you how you can freeze movement in your shot, whether that's an athlete flying through the air, water droplets, or just a model posing. Most of the time when you're using flash indoors, the only light contributing to your shots is the light coming from your strobes. That's because that light is typically a lot brighter than the ambient light. When that happens, your shutter speed isn't what freezes movement. It's the brief burst of light from your flashes. The time it takes to discharge that light is known as the flash duration, which is expressed as a fraction of a second. And the flash duration speeds are basically going to freeze movement, just like a shutter speed would. If you've ever shot a series of images and found that you had a lot of ghosting going on, it was likely because you were using flash too close to the ambient light and or your flash had a very long flash duration. In a previous test, which I will link to, I found that if you want to stop the movement of a dancer flying through the air, then you need to overpower the light in the room by three stops or more, and you need a flash duration of one three thousandth of a second. Or it could be shorter. And this makes sense because if you were photographing sports outdoors during the day, then you'd want to use a three thousandth or thirty two fifty of a second shutter speed, something high like that in order to stop that motion. Using high speed sync is what many people think you should use in order to freeze movement. But what happens is, is that you take the total volume output that your light can produce and you cut it down into little tiny bursts of light. And none of those pulses are very bright. And so what ends up happening is that in order to shoot at a four thousandth of a second with high speed sync, you're going to need to shoot wide open at like F2 or you're going to need to use really high ISO. So that's really not the best approach. What is the best approach is to use your camera standard sync speed, which for most of us is going to be around a two hundredth of a second. That will allow you to power down your strobes. It will also allow you to get some nice depth of field in your images because you won't be shooting at F2 and you'll be able to shoot at lower ISOs than you would be using if you were shooting with high speed sync. Many manufacturers, including Ellen Chrome, but not Profoto, show the flash duration on the light's LCD panel. For Profoto and other manufacturers, you will need to look at this information up in the manual. In general, the brighter the light is, the longer it's going to take for the flash to discharge the light. Some lights can discharge light faster than others, but for the most part, if your image is blurry, just turn down the flash power and see if that makes a difference. My Sekonic L858 light meter can measure flash duration. And so one of the tests that I conducted was to check the flash duration for the Ellen Chrome 3 and my friend's Profoto B10 at several different power settings. Profoto states in their manuals that the flash duration for the B10 and the B10X are exactly the same. In addition, I didn't see any claims that the B10X had different color output than the B10, but it is possible. We will be checking the white balance in our next test. Both manufacturers have a mode where they prioritize speed over color accuracy. Profoto uses the terms freeze and normal, and Ellen Chrome uses the terms action and standard. Here is how they compare in each mode. As you can see, the flash duration for the Profoto B10 is a little shorter in general at the same power settings. So when you're shooting dancers, you'll need to power down the three about one third of a stop more than you will the B10 to hit that magical one three thousandth of a second flash duration. Using action or freeze mode though does have its consequences. Both manufacturers lights go from having very stable white balance in normal or standard mode to having a more variable white balance in freeze and action mode. I conducted this test by placing a color checker in a cove that I created out of black foam boards. And I did this to eliminate the possibility that light could reflect off objects in my studio and enter into the area. 
I photographed the checker and set a white balance on the 18% gray square in Capture One and then recorded the white balance numbers in a spreadsheet. This is not as sophisticated of a test as using the Sakonic color meter. However, it did give me consistent results. You'll notice that the Ellen Chrome and Profoto lights both have very similar results closer to full power, but when you go to lower power values on the lights, the light becomes very blue and shifts towards green. The Pro Photo Light is technically more consistent again across the power range. However, I found previously that when you are using multiple lights and modifiers, a 500 degree Kelvin shift from light to light within a picture is not noticeable. I've used Ellen Chrome lights for the past five years and I've only noticed a color shift in my images a few times and that was mostly when I was using a light at very low power in action mode. In fact, I would avoid going below power setting 0.9 while in action mode. That was one of the things that I learned in these tests. The Pro Photo Light also shifted considerably when it went from power setting 5 to 4 in freeze mode. For general studio photography, on the other hand, you can use normal or standard mode. As you can see here on this chart, the white balance is extremely stable for both lights, but the Ellen Chrome flash duration numbers are lower. To make sure these numbers weren't too low, I conducted a test photo shoot with my model friend Jason. I used the 3 at full power in standard mode, which resulted in a flash duration of 1 489th of a second, and I only had 7 blurry images, which is equal to about 2%. So really, it's not a big deal. You may have noticed that these two lights have a very different design. Current Pro Photo Mono lights have a flat front and the Ellen Chrome lights have a glass dome on the front of the flash with the flash tube protruding slightly outside of the body. When I used Pro Photo lights, I tested the standard D1 head, a D1 with an accessory dome, and an acute head in a Pro Photo Silver Beauty Dish. I found that the light from the flat faced model produced less contrast than the light from the acute head, which has the flash tube sitting outside of the body. The D1 with the dome fell in the middle. I conducted similar tests with other modifiers and concluded that you need a light with the flash tube outside of the body to properly fill a beauty dish and large modifiers. When I started looking into the Ellen Chrome system, I already owned a few of their modifiers and seeing that the flash tube was sitting outside of the body made switching over very attractive. Light emanates differently from the heads based on this design. With the three, the light comes out with a beam angle of about 160 degrees, whereas the Profoto B10 produces approximately a 70 degree beam angle. In order to test the brightness of these lights, I set up my light meter four feet or 1.2 meters from the lights, and when I tested them bare bulb, the B10 was about 1.2 stops brighter. Now, I would expect this because the Pro Photo directs its light forward, whereas the Ellen Chrome light directs it more in a hemisphere. Next, I tested them in different modifiers that would capture the entire beam spread and then push it forward. So, first, I tested them in an Ellen Chrome 105 centimeter umbrella or 41 inches and I placed the light in the umbrella so that the flash tube was even with the rim of the modifier. Both lights in this test metered at f11 and 5 tenths. Then I placed the lights in the totally agnostic Fotex softlighter umbrella with the diffusion cover, and the Ellen Chrome light metered at f8 and 5 tenths, and the Pro Photo light metered at f8 and 1 tenth. I also placed the lights in a Mola Rayo, a 15 inch hard reflector, and the 3 metered at f22 and 4 tenths, and the B10 metered at f22 and 1 tenth. Finally, I placed both lights in the Ellen Chrome 100 centimeter or 39 inch deep octabox, and they both metered at f8 and 3 tenths. So, I would say that these lights are pretty much the same when it comes to brightness. I also tested the lights during the shoe with DJ by placing them both in the Fotex soft lighter. And as you can see, the results are extremely similar. I don't see an increased gradient from the top to the bottom with the Pro Photo light, even though I would expect to see this given the head design. So the head design difference may only be important in particular modifiers. 
I would have tested them in a beauty dish, but I no longer have one that I can use with both of these lights. I also tested the lights by taking several photos at the same power settings, and then I analyzed those shots to see if there were any shifts in color or luminance from shot to shot. And what I found was that both lights are nearly perfect. Here is a sample of some of the test series that I took with each light at the same power setting. As you can see, Every frame is basically identical. So looking at everything that we've seen today, you can see that sometimes Pro Photo is winning and sometimes Elenchrome is winning. At the end of the day, the Elenchrome light is going to have a street price that is about one half that of the Pro Photo light. So for many users, the choice between these two is going to be very obvious. But please let us know in the comments which one you think won in this comparison. When you buy a light, you're really buying into an ecosystem. And the main reason why I switched over to Elenchrome is because I loved their modifiers, including their light motive, 190 centimeter indirect octabox. I remember how excited I was when I first got this modifier and how I started using it to shoot these painterly portraits and it really felt like I was recreating window light and I just didn't have that with the Pro Photo 150 centimeter octabox. One of the other determining factors was when I saw a video about the Sekonic L478 light meter which can talk directly to the Elenchrome Skyport system and it along with the 858 which is the one that I use now will allow you to fire the lights measure them and adjust them right from the light meter and this really speeds up things on set it used to be that I would hold the pro photo trigger in one hand and the Sekonic L308B light meter in the other hand and then I'd be firing and testing it and then adjusting it and pressing through all of those groups going through A through F and it, it was just a total pain. So the light meter makes things a lot better. Another thing I love about the Ellen Chrome system is that they have a great mobile and desktop app. Both of them are free as well and you're able to connect 20 different lights at a time with the app and adjust all of the settings for those lights directly in the program and then you can save a configuration file for that setup and then load it later so if you're doing the same shots over and over again in your studio you can set up scene files for those setups and then load them after you move the lights into place and it will really speed up your workflow in a previous video i used the mobile app in order to program seven different lighting setups on the same set with multiple lights which i executed in 10 minutes while photographing nfl players and you can check that video out as well by clicking up here my key takeaway though from all of these tests is that i will be using the standard mode from now on with all of my lights, unless I know that there is going to be movement in the shot that I need to freeze, like a model walking through the scene or an athlete flying through the frame. If action mode is warranted, then I will stay above Ellen Chrome power setting 1.0 when using multiple lights in the same shot. And I will look out for color shifts as I shoot and adjust my power settings to get more homogeneous results based on the tests that I did and those white balance charts that I came up with. If you're shooting with the Pro Photo B10, remember that big shift in color happens in freeze mode between power settings four and five. Most brands are going to have a color accurate mode and a flash duration mode. So even if you're not using Pro Photo or Elenchrome, you might be better off following the same strategy as well. If you'd be interested in a video with the white balance and flash duration test results for all of my Ellen Chrome lights and modifiers, please let me know in the comments. I've already conducted some of those tests and I could turn that into a video. And I, with the help of my friends, I could probably get some pro photo lights as well and include those too, like the D2. In the end, the Ellen Chrome 3 will be a great choice for many photographers as 261 watt seconds is more than enough for most applications. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. If you could please like and subscribe and sign up for the bell and all of that good stuff, I would appreciate it too. Thanks again for your time. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.